I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> Probably not. Well, been back doing a little more work here on the, the Do-All 14 inch grinder. Looks like conventional wisdom says for me to save these for a much heavier machine and go with the ones that were here. Now these are the factory ones and whoever had it just put these pads underneath it so we're going to go back with that. Now a few people said uh, what does it matter if the grinding wheel is balanced? I wasn't thinking along that I was hung up on the transferring vibration from the floor to the machine and vice versa. But I'm about four miles from the nearest railroad and the heaviest thing that goes on this side of the building is my wife's mule so I was just kind of overthinking it a little bit. So today I'm going to jack this sucker up, screw these in, drink a little bit of Heineken 0.0 and have a good time. Follow along. Save these for this big grinder over here. Now I've got to get this up, and the easiest way is to use a toe jack over here on the uh, little lifting bolt. I think if I can get it up enough, I can go to the middle. And I also want to put some rollers underneath it down here so I can roll it forward about an inch. where I want it. I always put a piece of wood between any metal points when lifting, like uh, using a forklift. If you put a piece of wood rubber on the, uh, the fork, machines won't slide on you. Ask me how I know. I've got it where I want it. And so now I need to pick up the back end enough to where I can uh, put the pads on the bottom. And for doing that, I'm going to have that and this. So I need to have enough adjustment. So I need to adjust all these about the same amount because then we're going to have to level it. Hmm. Let's use this. Stick that there and adjust that down to it. I hear my wife coming. Y'all be quiet. She tracked me down. Oh. Told you to be quiet, you didn't do it. <laughs> Give me one second and I'll go help you put the deer corn out. One one thousand. You've been living with me too long. I know. <laughs> Yesterday was our 23rd anniversary. No. Nope. 22nd. Yep. We're working on 23. I don't think so. Yes, we are. <laughs> Change my mind. Okay. Those are all set. I got to go put out some deer corn for the starving deer. I'll be back. Well, now that I've got the machine up a little bit, I can use the toe jack 
function. And slide this jack underneath it. And go from there. Get kind of in the middle. And what I want to do is pick this side up enough that I can get the pads under it. Now, kind of want to block it up as I go. I was just getting one of these jacks for years. May do with bars. One day I needed it. As long as I had to have it, I just use it all the time now. I can teach an old dog new tricks. You gotta remember now to watch your tables. This grinder is an automatic one. And uh, the cover that fits here has a peg that goes into this horizontal uh, piston that moves the table back and forth. But if that's disconnected, there's nothing holding this table on. Another ask me how I know. <laughs> Some guy said I should start a, a channel. I have a hard enough time with one channel. I think I want a piece of cardboard to put down. See this oil stain on the floor? Maybe it's, you can tell better on the other side of this stool. Last year, many of you know, I suffered the Widowmaker heart attack. When I came home from the hospital, after three or four days, I felt well enough to come into the shop. And I walked in, and there was this huge oil stain all over. Turns out, my brand new oil suction machine that I had, to you know, you can suck oil out into a pressure tank. Developed a pinhole leak on the bottom of the radiator. It spilled all over this thing. And it just, it's too late to do anything about it. Let's see if we can get under here. Any of you might recognize this as the Dawn pose or Dawn position? Just kidding. I like old Dawn. What I'm doing is I set all these nuts, the jam nuts, at the right height, at the same height, and uh, I'm putting this up till it hits that jam nut. That leaves me about a half an inch of up and down travel each way. Things are oil soaked. It doesn't feel it, but boy, you put on the pressure and it just comes right out. I have a question for you. When I read the comments, and I read every single one of them that shows up to tell me there's a new comment, YouTube now has a new feature that when I read your comment, look at your name, it's got a little red mark beside your name that I can click on and, it's, and it tells me you're subscribed. Well, reading through the comments, I see a lot of people that uh, I talk to all the time, but they're not subscribed. So that leaves me wondering, how in the heck did you know to come look at a video 
if you've not subscribed and ring the bell for notifications. Uh, a lot of people that I see I would have thought would have been subscribed. Just wondering. Now you know I don't I don't beat you over the head to subscribe like almost every other channel on YouTube. And I just kind of never have liked that. So I don't do it. But it's the only way that my channel grows because YouTube puts so much emphasis on likes and subscribe that that's how the word gets out. So if you do like what I do, subscribe, would you? I told Don one time it didn't really matter to me, but frankly over the years it's kind of grown in importance. And so to keep doing this, I gotta know there's enough people wanting me to do this. Otherwise, man, I could get a lot done without having to film and edit and all that. So, let me know how you find out about the comments. If you wanna subscribe and see the channel continue, please do. Enough said. Let's go up. This is one complicated machine down here. I see all kinds of micro switches for positioning, sensors, hydraulic sensors. God, I hope it all works. In the fire service, we call this cribbing. And you always want to be safe, so cribbing is your friend. there be oil coming out of those pads. Huh. All right. I'm going to leave that there because now we've got to, we've got to level it. Do that right now. If I can get up. Now that I've got the feet on it, I need to level it. Who knows what this old slab is. This was the quote, quote, heavy duty slab when they put it down, but there's two kinds of concrete. Concrete that hasn't cracked, but is going to, and then concrete that has cracked. So that's what happens. Especially when you put five and six thousand pound machines all over your shop. Uh, anyway, this is a 30 inch by 10 inch mag chuck. And it looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't know if anybody's ever skimmed it or not. But I'm going to clean it off because to level it, I'm going to put a precision level on top of this and then use it to level the mag chuck. So, when I brought it down here, I put some bow shield on it, just to keep it protected as much as I could. Get all the grit off of it and everything with this. See any dings or gouges? Back rail's missing, but we can make a new one of those.
This is a Magnalock USA HL1030, draws 9 amps, 230 volts DC. So what the heck? Why do I need 208 to get, well that's DC, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Got my AC and my DC mixed up. Now, I'm going to use Don's trip just to get it off. Make sure it's all clean. And Don's trick is to take WD-40 and spray on it. Then a pad. And then a cheap palm sander. Let's see what it does. And yes, I know I can pull it out farther, but then I'd have to go get an extension cord to reach the wall plug over there. So, yeah, as close as I can without messing it up. Let's put some degreaser on it now. Let's see what we got. Looking better already. Let's give it another shot. Now, before people wig out, so while you're destroying the surface of that mag chuck. Remember, a grinder is used to true that surface off in place. Just like my planer. My planer table can be renewed by the planer. So can a grinder. How's that, folks? About a close-up.
All right. That's the surface after just a little bit of work. Now, if I drop down this rail here, you can see where it's kind of yellowish. If I drop down that rail, I can go all the way to the edge. One more time with the finer pad would leave that almost new looking. Don't you wish everything was that easy to redo? Now before I finish this for today, I'm going to put Bowshield T9 on it. For those that you don't know, Bowshield was invented by the Boeing company for this purpose, to keep things from rusting machine surfaces. It works really, really nice. I guess it could do airplanes and stuff too, but this is a really nice product. Another thing you learn when you learn to hand scrape is use your hands. I just went over this surface with a paper towel and man it feels just really really nice. But my hand is so many more times sensitive than this paper towel and you can feel particles. So always wipe off your precision surface with your hand before you measure it. That feels really nice. I'm not even going to stone it. I don't feel any kind of burrs anywhere. I'm going to go get some food, then we'll go get my level, then I'll come back and we'll finish this off. Well, you might can tell by the color of my shirt, it's a, another day. I got to thinking about it last night and I decided to let this settle onto the felt pads that it squeezed out. Now, I know those aren't factory pads, but somebody had them underneath there, so... The consensus was use them, so I did. As I showed you, I cleaned off the, the top of the uh, mag chuck. And before I left last night, I went and sprayed it down with this Bowshield T9. This is good stuff. You can find it at uh, Amazon and uh, the, the woodworking stores in Houston all have it. So I imagine it's pretty easy to find there too. So, I love this stuff. It even smells good. Now that I've got it set up, cleaned off, and, I, and I've really looked that over pretty well, I'm going to show you how I looked it over and what we're going to do to level it. Now, even though this looks pretty good, I don't even see any grinding marks on it. I don't know if anybody's ever surfaced it or not. But one of the things I'm going to do to check is to see if I can see any waviness in the, the, uh, the table. I think that would be a good indication of an uneven grinding. So the easiest way I know of is to take a straight edge remember always wipe it off with your hand and put it on there the second thing I do is you can't put a feeler gauge under it unless it's really grossly bad I take a little bitty uh, flashlight in fact Don gave me this for Christmas. A little sliding uh, do wand or whatever it is, name of it. Got a little head right here with an LED. 
and you can get into pretty tight spaces with it. It's even got a magnet on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is run this across the back and look under that straight edge to see if I see any light coming underneath. I don't see any hint of light. I even did it with the, the lights off in the shop here. But that's a neat way of easily figuring out if something's grossly wrong. You can see a thousands, half thousands deviation under that with this light easily. So that makes me feel good. So straight edges are wonderful tools. I've got about six or seven of them, different sizes and shapes. They come in handy for more things than you would ever think of. Now that I've got this table centered, I want to see how in level the machine is. And I have a variety of different levels. This is a Starrett um, number 98. Now I forget what the uh, the measurement is per foot on this one. But it's telling me that this back end is low. Maybe a 64th this way on this little piece and quite a bit this way. Now also have another spirit. And this one has a division on the the front. See if you can read that. Each division equals 0 0.0005 or half a thou. This one is much, much more sensitive than that one is. So I find that if you use this one first, you really chase your tail trying to get it in there. So I use less sensitive levels. And in fact, heck, most of the time I start off with a carpenter's level till we get to where it's pretty dialed in, then I go to this one. So right now, this one shows to be low on this end by roughly oh, maybe a 64th in a foot. So I'm going to get on the back and I'm going to raise those back two leveling feet up so we can get it this way. But I'll pay more attention to getting that one and this one higher with that back farther one just a little bit higher. It's harder to level with four feet. You know, three feet, three points to find a plane. So I've always find it easier to level things like that. Maybe from old telescope days when you're collimating one, it's a lot easier for three points to collimate. Okay, I gotta get down on the ground. Uh. Started bending some of the conduit for the, the electrical run over here. Get this out of my way. I actually cheat when I bend conduit. I don't do it all the time. In fact, 
I've maybe been conduit three times this year. There's some guys that, man, they're masters at it. They can just look at the wall and know what to do. Me, I have to think. And that hurts sometimes. But this is a heavy machine, so I'm going to help myself by taking some of the weight off of it and then get up there and turn it. Now, I don't know how well you can see that level there. This is where it helps to have two people. might see I jacked it up a little bit. Now it's strong over here. But that back foot's still going to need more. as I used to. Hell, I'm thankful I spring up at all. Still need to come back. Well, you aren't even watching. My oh, gosh, guys, come on, keep up. This way, I've gone the opposite from what we started. Now the bubble's over here. So this end is lower, but I'm still higher on this it needs to be higher on this side than the other. So I need to pick this side up still quite a bit. Well, I did a lot back there, a little here. So now I'm going to go to the opposite corner on the other side and see if I can pick it up enough just with the wrench. I need another piece of cardboard. Y'all watch it and tell me when I'm gone enough. These are pretty coarse leveling feet. They're three quarter inch by 10 threads per inch screws. That moved my bubble back here. So we're now low again over here. So 10 turns will raise it a whole an inch. So you kind of got to be careful. Let's see how we're doing over here. The 
back still needs to go up. I'm going to go one full turn there and one full turn there and see what we do. Do we do any good? We took about half of it out. I'm going to go another turn on both of them. Well, before I do that, let's see how we are this way. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. About halfway inside the lines. And perfect that was. That was pretty good. Let me show you. just a slight bit off this way I was touching the main lines on either side now this way these go just a tiny hair this side now I'm not going to chase it anymore with this level I'm going to change to a more Well, I'm going to change to a more sensitive level. See how I've hand scraped the bottom of this level? I'll see if I can get you closer so you can see the bubble. Because I raised that back one up some, it made it better in one direction, but I think I need to raise this back one up some. See, it's just a, a game of back and forth, back and forth. Remember how I did a little bit and it made a big difference? That's a little bit. That little bit. Now, let's see how we're doing here.
that tells me I'm doing good. I'm going to go back to do a little bit more. Go back to this back one. As you can tell I'm barely moving that. As you can tell I'm barely making any adjustment at all. We got that one there. See what we got. Well, folks, that's where I'm going to end it right now. This way is perfect. It's just a tiny half a bubble off this way with that really sensitive half a thou in a foot level. My problem is, is we're on those felt pads. And when I put the weight on it last night, it squished a lot of oil that I couldn't even feel out of them. So they're, they could be settling. I let it settle all night. I'm going to leave this here. And in the morning, I'll check it again. Because I think I'm just going to be chasing my tail, trying to get it absolutely dead nuts on with an unknown of those felt pads. Now, if it was the rubber pads, I don't think there would be that compression problem. But it's close, it's really close. So we're gonna leave it set and go on to other things. Time I get it wired up and running again, maybe we'll have time to settle on down and compress as much as it's gonna compress. Or I could just get Don to ride up back and forth on it. That'd work. Oh well, that's how I'm going 